Have you ever been comfortable with the idea of doing the uncomfortable? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guest, I felt this situation before. How many of you remember what inspired you to come to your first Toastmaster meeting? For me, it was February 2006. I had a big sales call. I did my presentation, and then I received some malign feedback from my potential clients. <laughs> I would rather hear nails on the chalkboard. Let me give you some advice. Find a new job. <laughs> That's when I knew I needed Toastmasters. For the next five and a half years, I pushed myself just outside the comfort zone. Speech by speech, task by task. Eventually, I hit a crossroads. I could be happy with the growth I had as a speaker, or I could start a brand new club and go for my DTM. That brand new club forced me to visit the uncomfortable zone. When you visit the uncomfortable zone, can you imagine the people that will ride with you? Starting a brand new club in Toastmasters requires a lot of work. You have to find 20 people that have never heard of Toastmasters, convince them to join, then you train them on how to run a meeting, and then finally you train them on how to be officers. There's one other little problem. You have to fill out more paperwork than the average man has to fill out for tax returns. <laughs> Surprisingly, no one in my club at the time wanted to join me on this adventure. District 10, Northeast Ohio felt bad for me. They recruited two people to help me out. I'll never forget that drive to the Stowe Library when I realized I had no idea who these two people were. As I walked into the library, I immediately saw someone I recognized at a past officer training. I realized he was one of my teammates. He walked up to me, we shook hands, and then he said to me, starting a club's insane, man. I hope you have a plan because if not, I'm gonna put you in a straitjacket." <laughs> immediately I knew Bill Ferry and I would be good friends. The other person, I heard her name several times throughout the years but I never physically met her. In fact, three weeks before, she was serving our country in Iraq. Just returning, I looked at her, I smiled. She gave me a menacing glare. Then she came over, she shook my hand like she was gonna break it. And then she spoke. Listen up, civilian. You better toe the line or I will throat punch you. Right away, I knew I needed to be afraid of Missy Moore. Bill, Missy, and I had to agree on the fact that we needed to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. We had to work together. Over the next several weeks, we plotted, we worked hard, we tried to understand each other's strengths and weaknesses, and we wondered how the heck we were going to make this work. The district felt very confident in our team. In fact, they fully expected by our first meeting, we'd have 20 people signed up, ready to go. We believed that hype. In fact, we agreed we would have a celebratory beer after that first meeting. We walked into that room that very first day, we saw six people. Bill whispered in my ear, we're not grabbing that beer tonight, are we, buddy? Bill, I'm just hoping Missy doesn't kill us. <laughs> When you travel to the uncomfortable zone, what skills do you learn? Have you ever had a plan that you thought was gonna work perfectly and it turned out to be a disaster? That's how our kickoff felt. The wind was taken out of our sails. Three people joined that night. The other three people talked to Missy and we never saw them again. I never asked Missy what happened. To our credit, we refused to give up. We worked harder, we grinded. Those three new members eventually became six new members. Those six new members eventually became 12 new members. And then we were stuck and we were frustrated. Finally, one night after a tough meeting, I looked at Bill and said, what do we need to do to get to 20? We could have Missy threaten to kill people if they don't join the club. <laughs> Bill, I'm serious. 
okay, Pete, here's my idea. What do we want this club to look like once we chartered? We need to work backwards from there and figure it out. That gave us an idea. We looked at the club, we looked at what we needed to do, and then finally we came up with a plan. We had to agree to be comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable with our marketing strategy. Over the next six weeks, I went to various HR departments and talked to them about this brand new Toastmaster Club and why their employees should join. Missy held a public speaking boot camp where Bill and I also dressed up in camouflage. She threatened to kill us if we didn't. Finally, Bill, he hit the nail on the head. He found some marketing efforts with the media. He convinced the Stowe Patch to come in and film our table topic sessions. Six weeks later, we gained member number 20. When you travel to the uncomfortable zone, how high do you set your goals? How would you feel after something you worked so hard for came to fruition? We were jumping up and down in the parking lot. Then Bill and I were shocked because we saw something we never saw out of Missy before, a smile. Missy even came over and hugged us. Ow, Missy, you cracked our ribs. Sorry, I'm just so happy. We are too, Missy. Now we get to relax. That smile quickly became a menacing glare again. Missy had other plans. She wanted the club to be distinguished. Being distinguished is something half the clubs in the world can't do in 12 months. How the heck were we supposed to pull that off in three months? Guys, I have a plan. Bill, Pete, we've been through this together. Just trust me on this. We have to set the goals high now. We cannot be mediocre. Missy, I'm just glad you stopped calling me civilian. <laughs> Don't push me. Missy's plan worked flawlessly. We became the fastest club in District 10 history at the time to go from a chartered club to a distinguished club. It's been six years since Bill, Missy, and I first worked together to start Stowe Toastmasters. Even though we've all long left the club, we remain close friends. Bill actually works two buildings down from me. We meet up for lunch once a month. Missy and I talk on the phone once a month at least. The skills that I've learned from that experience have helped me in so many other aspects of my life. It's helped me at home, it's helped me at work, and quite frankly, it's helped me here as your VP of PR. Finally, the club that we chartered, Stowe Toastmasters, they're doing quite well. They just celebrated their fifth consecutive President's Distinguished Year. That's the second longest streak in the entire district. Those friendships, those skills, and those successes would have never been possible if we didn't have the courage to travel to the uncomfortable zone. You may never be threatened to be put in a straitjacket, and I pray no one ever wants to throat punch you. However, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, remember what Bill and Missy taught me. Go to the uncomfortable zone. Madam Toastmaster.